Hey everybody, Brett Mix here from Macho Wrestling 101. Hit like and subscribe if you like my videos. I do history of wrestling videos every day. And of course I stay up to date with Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views and all that. So if you subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to build the channel. Today we have another SummerSlam in the SummerSlam Anthology Reviews. I'm doing SummerSlam 88 all the way to SummerSlam 2023. And uh, we're on the third annual SummerSlam here. So it's 1990 from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Or the old arena they used to call the Spectrum. Uh, Vince McMahon and Rowdy Roddy Piper do Rowdy Roddy Piper do the commentary for this event. That's kicked off by the Rockers versus Power and Glory. Hercules and Paul Roma are the team for Power and Glory. Glory, sorry, I can speak. Power and Glory. Uh, Paul Roma and Hercules are that take team against Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels. Uh, Power and Glory have the Doctor of Style Slick at their corner. Uh, this match had some good double teaming, uh, good double team action inside and outside. Uh, Michaels had a knee injury at the time, and they worked that into the match. It was reportedly legit, but wrestling tends to play off reality. Janetti was in the ring for a two-on-one, basically the most of the match because of that Michaels injury. The heels took it to Janetti with a double slam and a double big superplex. At the same time, both of them had Janetti on the top rope, and they both sort of landed a, a superplex by both Power and Glory. That gave them the win at 559. And um, post match, they beat on Shawn Michaels, and they just took it to him down on the ground. After so, always good to open with a good tag team match. I give this two and a half stars, but uh, this this was a different kind of tag match as it had the heels going over quickly with a heel beat down at the end. So that was kind of uh, unique for uh, to start the pay per view. Not really that kind of ending. And but next we have a match that. Sounds more like an opener. It's an Intercontinental title match. Mr. Perfect defending against the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich. Uh, Mr. Perfect was just a new IC champion at the time. as he, The title was vacated after WrestleMania VI when the Warrior beat Hogan. The Warrior had both belts, so instead of having the Warrior lose the title, they vacated the IC title and had a tournament. Mr. Perfect defeated Tito Santana in the finals of that tournament. So Mr. Perfect's now the Intercontinental Champion, but he's defending it against Kerry Von Erich, the Texas Tornado of this event. Uh, two good workers in this match. Uh, Von Erich hit the claw, and then a discus punch where he spins, or, spins around before a big sucker punch. And uh, that's how Perfect lost the IC title at 5 minutes and 13 seconds. It was a big upset win. Uh, and this match was too short to get anything uh, of a great grade. But these two are good workers, so the limited time they had in the match wasn't wasn't poor. So I'd give it two and a half stars. But yeah, Kerry Von Erich won the match and is the new Intercontinental Champion over Mr. Perfect. So um, that's that, two and a half stars. Next, we had Sapphire versus Sherry. This is a ma major storyline going on to this pay-per-view is... Where was Sapphire? Uh, she was always at Dusty Rhodes' side, but she uh, she didn't show up. So Sherry won uh, by by forfeit. Uh, and but throughout the night, uh, Dusty Rhodes was wondering where's Sapphire, and we'll get the answer later on. Demolition now have a third member. It's Crush as they were backstage. This this match right here at take, with the tag team titles. It was Demolition and Heart Foundation. Uh, Demolition uh, came into this match. This is this is a match actually. It's a rematch of a SummerSlam two SummerSlams ago. They fought at the inaugural SummerSlam in 1988. Uh, Demolition won that match. Can they make it two in three years? And this is a two out of three falls match as well. So there's kind of a lineage with two out of three. Um, Demolition gets the first fall after the crush pinned the Hitman, but then Demolition was DQ'd after their interference with Hebner in the second fall. So this one was tied up at one fall apiece. The final fall began, and the both teams got their offense in, but until the Legion of Doom came out. Demolition was looking for the Demolition decapitation, their double team move, until the Road Warriors were outside of the ring distracting them. Brett pinned Crush from behind and then kissed the titles as we have new tag team champions. The Hart Foundation are the victorious. Uh, Brett made everything look so smooth. Brett, Brett's just, he is just amazing in this match. Uh, three stars and a quarter, I give it. 
their their match with the Brain Busters at the SummerSlam before. If you watch that review I just did, that that shows you how great he is. But I think we all know how that Bret Hart was an underrated wrestler before he was in the WWF title scene. I think everybody foresaw that he was going to be something big. Uh, he was already the best pound for pound wrestler uh, in the entire federation. I'd put him right up there with Randy Savage. And, uh, yeah, at this time, really, I'd put him up there with Randy Savage, Mr. Perfect, uh, for being pound for pound the best wrestler in the business at the time, as far as scientific wrestling goes, and selling and all that kind of stuff, criteria. Anyway, Jake the Snake Roberts took on Bad News Brown next with the big boss man of the referee. Boss man looked like he was in great shape here, and he's the ref. Bad News got DQ'd at 444 as he hit Jake Roberts with a chair in the midsection. More than once is enough, but he did it again. It's too bad, though. This is pretty entertaining until that finish. I gave it a star in three quarters. Next, we had Volkov and Duggan versus the Orient Express. This They didn't do anything. Basically, this match it lasted three minutes, which surprised me because when I just watched it, I didn't feel like anything happened in it. Duggan then hit Tanaka with a hard clothesline and pinned him at 322. Uh, bad match. The only thing good was that, like I said, it was kept short. So I give that a half a star. Next up, we had the Macho King, Randy Savage versus Dusty Rhodes. And this is where we find out where Sapphire was. Sapphire, uh, as Macho King, Randy Savage, it was more of a story than a wrestling match. And some of it is humorous, where some of it is not so humorous. As the Macho King, there's just sirens outside my place right now, so... That's not intended to... Yeah, everything's cool. Okay, good. It just ended. Sorry about that. The Macho King Dusty Rhodes. This is more of a storytelling, which it has some humorous parts in it, but not all of it was humorous. The Macho King Ross, uh, Randy Savage took on Dusty Rhodes here. As Macho King Randy Savage stood in the ring, DiBiase and Virgil came out to the stage, and DiBiase said on the microphone that Dusty Rhodes might want to see his newest prize, Sapphire. Sapphire then comes out with a fur coat and a diamond ring and a necklace with DiBiase laughing, saying, Everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. Roddy Piper and Vince can't believe it on commentary. Dusty Rhodes can't believe it. He's shocked and he's hurt. And uh, this bit, this, this bit, this, uh, Rhodes gets a bit of an upper hand out of anger as he chases Savage to the outside, but he pushes Sherry in front of, in front of him. Savage hit Rhodes with a big bag and gets the three count at 215, evening the odds from the WrestleMania match they had. Not the best way to end this feud, but at the same time, it was a little humorous how it all went down from Savage's point of view. Not humorous from Dusty Rhodes' point of view. He was uh, took it advantage of. I give it a star for the storytelling. <laughs> the match wasn't really much of anything. Next, we had Hulk Hogan versus Earthquake in one of the two main events. Hogan was on the defense law in this match, as you might expect. A big man in there with him. He was caught with a long bear hug by Quake. Earthquake had a long bear hug uh, slapped on, and uh, he continued to apply that. Hogan then hulked up and went crazy. We've seen this stuff before. As predictable as it, as it always is. It never gets tired for the fans, though. Uh, he hulks up, and then he goes, and, and Piper says, What is this? As if we've never seen it before, either, which was kind of interesting. Jimmy Hart practically dragged Earthquake out of the ring, and Hogan won the match in the end by countout at 13-16. So basic formula, good for what it was, not much else. I give it a star and a half. Next, we had the main event with... Heenan, and War Heenan with Rude versus the Warrior for the WWF title in a steel cage match. This is where they still had the blue steel cage. Um, I wonder what Bobby Heenan's record is in main event matches. It's got to be pretty low, especially when going against Hogan. I think it's winless, maybe. Warrior won at 10 minutes after his finishers and climbing to the cage to the floor. I like when a cage match is settled that way. I believe it should be the only way. Fuck going out the door, too. I don't, I don't think a pinfall submission or going out the door is a way to end a cage match. I think you should always have to climb it and go to the floor. Unless there is somebody that can't climb the ring. Like, like maybe like Zach Gowan or somebody like that. Maybe then the door. But other than that, yeah. 
Only thing this event is 20, 10 minutes though. That's the only problem. However, it it felt it felt there was quality over qual, uh, quantity over quality over quantity. It was a decent main event. I gave it two stars. Nothing in the classic tori- territory, but nothing awful. Overall, I give this event a 5.5 out of 10, sort of like last year. Uh, nothing really over three stars and a quarter, but at the same time, we didn't have duds and we didn't have terrible matches following each other. Each match seemed to be followed by a decent match. So 5.5 out of 10, a passing grade for SummerSlam 90. I know that the next couple SummerSlams are really good quality-wise, SummerSlam 91 and SummerSlam 92. So I look forward to those, and I hope you t- tune into those as well. And uh, if you haven't liked it, subscribe, please do that. And I appreciate it. It would go a long way for me. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support. We'll see you then for the SummerSlam 91 next. This has been SummerSlam 1990 from Philadelphia, 5.5 out of 10. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.